My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we are about to pray the way of the cross, Via Crucis. This is a devotion that is associated with our Lenten observances. Before we begin, I request you to ask yourself, where do you want to go? Where are you going? And how will you get there? The way of the cross is the only way. There is no other way. Because the way of the cross is the way of Jesus. And Jesus is the only way. The way of the cross is the only way. Because it is the way of life. The cross is the symbol, the perfect symbol of life and love. The way of the cross is the only way. But the paradox of it, my dear brothers and sisters, is the way of the cross does not end in the cross. The way of the cross always leads to the resurrection. Actually, the way of the cross always leads to the way of light. The Via Crucis leads to the Via Lucis, the way of light. We are here to meditate on the passion of the Lord, on the step-by-step process of reaching Calvary and then overcoming death by the power of love. What does the way of the cross teach us as we reflect on the reality of persecuted Christians all over the world? The first message of the way of the cross is God loves us. God loves us so much that He shows His love by accompanying us. He went through the way of the cross so that when we go through our own way of the cross, we will remember Him as our faithful, our loyal, and loving companion. To our brothers and sisters in many parts of the world, in Asia, in Africa, in many other countries who are suffering because of the faith, I just want to assure you that God is with you. And God has gone through the way of the cross ahead of us so that when we go through our own way of the cross, we may find Christ accompanying us. In a manner of speaking, in the first way of the cross, Simon of Cyrene helped to carry the cross of Jesus. In our own stations of the cross, at every station, it is Jesus who becomes our Simon of Cyrene, who carries our crosses daily, the cross of persecution, the cross of gossip, the cross of calumny, the cross of imprisonment, even the cross of being crucified again and again for our faith. The second lesson of the way of the cross is that it is a story of sin. While it is a story of God's love for us, it is a story of human sinfulness. The hardness of the heart, the closeness of the mind, the hardness of the feast, the violence of the tongue, all of these came about in the way of the cross. It is a story of human sinfulness. And the paradox of it, my dear brothers and sisters, is Christ died for the very same people who cursed him, who beat him, who laughed at him, who mocked him, who nailed his hands and feet to the cross. Christ died for all. Christ did not only die for a fans club. Christ did not only die for the good. Christ did not only die for the virtuous and the holy. Christ died for all, sinners and saints alike. The way of the cross is the way of love, but it is also, unfortunately, the way of sin. Violence continues to haunt the world, and violence will continue to be written 
with the blood of our Christian martyrs. How do we face this? We face this with an act of faith and we say, love is a mystery, sin is also a mystery, too much to comprehend. But the mystery of God's mercy is stronger than the mystery of human sin. Finally, the way of the cross teaches us where to go. Where are we going? We are going to heaven, our true home. We are only transients here on earth. We are not permanent residents here. We are only moving through. We are only walking through. We are only pilgrims. We are only passing through this earth. And our real home, our real destiny is heaven. The way of the cross is a step-by-step -step journey into Calvary and beyond Calvary, into the tomb, and beyond the tomb, the hope of a new world, the hope of a resurrection. My dear brothers and sisters, I return again to my first question. Where are you going? Where do you want to go? Which path are you taking? Jesus is the way. Jesus is the one who sets us free. Let us allow the way of the cross to teach us again and again, God is love. We are sinners. But even if we are sinners, blackened by sin, blackened by our own wretchedness, our destiny is heaven. And Christ, through the way of the cross, through the way of Calvary into the empty tomb, has opened the gates of heaven for us. Let us pray for the Holy Father, Pope Francis. Let us pray for our brothers and sisters being persecuted for the Catholic faith. Let us pray for those who support them with prayers, with material support. Let us pray for one another. We cannot avoid the way of the cross because the way of the cross is the Christian way. But the way of the cross leads us to Easter. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus, King of mercy, I trust in you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Every day, millions of Christians around the world suffer for their faith. Many are persecuted for their beliefs. Their ordeals can include discrimination at home or in the workplace, fines, imprisonment, torture, and even execution. Still others are living out their Christian faith in extremely isolated communities or in the midst of an abject poverty. Father Warren Fried Van Stratton, the founder of Aid to the Church in Need, met many suffering and persecuted Christians on his travels around the world. He recognized the importance of each person. Every story involves real people with names, hopes, and dreams. It is often far too easy for us to think in terms of facts and statistics rather than about those individuals who are suffering. Father Werenfried asked, how is it that we in the West are so comfortably situated? These people live beneath the same sun and the same stars as we do. God also created them on the sixth day to be kings of creation. Where then is their kingdom? And we too will personally share in this injustice if we do not do everything in our power to banish it from the world. Everything in our power. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, 
As we prepare to reflect on your suffering and your death, we place into your hands all those who are persecuted in your name. We ask you to give them strength, patience, hope, and above all, to let them know of your love. As we pray the stations of the cross, let us unite our own sufferings with those of Jesus Christ and of our brothers and sisters in Christ across the world who are persecuted for their faith. The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no crime in him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. Christians have been killed, raped, tortured, and used to clear landmine peppered areas. Women and girls have been trafficked as brides to China. 3,000 villages have been burned to the ground in the past decade and over 200 churches destroyed since 2011. The U.S. Department of State Religious Freedom report called the plight of the 100,000 displaced Christians living in camps and thousands stranded in jungle terrain, desperate and unsustainable, while the UN branded the violence crimes against humanity. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you bore the pain and injustice of being condemned to death. By your humility and sacrifice, you made it possible for us to be free from the chains of sin and death and walk freely as your children. May those in our world who suffer the same pain and injustice be strengthened by knowing you stand alongside them in their suffering. We pray that they may experience the joy of your kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord Jesus, grant us the grace to never judge rashly and to look upon each person we meet as a son or daughter of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that we may never pass by those who are hurting, physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually. Lord, open our hearts and our eyes to those who need us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. I love, I love you, Jesus, Jesus my, my love above all things. I, I repent with my whole heart for, for having offended you. Never, never permit me to separate myself from, from you, you again. again. Grant that, that I may love you always, and, and then do with me what, what you will. We carry the signals to the roads of the world, to the alleys of poverty and misery, marching to The second station, Jesus takes up the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. So they took Jesus, and he went out, bearing his own cross, to the place called the place of a skull, 
which is called the Hebrew Golgotha. The massacre of more than 110 people, mostly Christians, including two priests and a pastor at a church-run displacement camp, highlighted the scale of the internal conflict afflicting the country. At least 19 people, including Father Albert Baba, were killed and about 120 injured in an attack during Mass on 1st May at Our Lady of Fatima's Church, Bangi. Parish priest Father Moses Oti said attackers outnumbered the police and the police retreated. Then the attackers started shooting at the church and throwing hand grenades at the people. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we pray that you give us the grace to shoulder our own crosses with the same strength and dignity with which you carried your cross. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Help us to remember that we still live as part of a church where you and your followers are still being persecuted. We offer you our own crosses and burdens as our prayer for our brothers and sisters across the world who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. I, I love you, Jesus, Jesus my, my love above, above all things. I, I repent with, with my whole heart for having offended you. Never, Never permit, permit me to separate myself from, from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. We carry the signals to the roads of the world, to the alleys of poverty and misery. Marching through a dawning day, to freedom and victory, to God's life. The third station, Jesus falls for the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Weakened by the pain and torture which he has undergone, Jesus falls under the wave of the cross. Jesus understands our weaknesses. We all experience weakness and pain in our lives. It might be physically, mentally, or emotionally. In the book of Psalms, we hear, The Lord is near to be brokenhearted and saves the crush in spirit. And St. Paul tells us in his letter to the Corinthians, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. I will all the more gladly boast of my weaknesses, that the, Lord, that the power of Christ may rest upon me for the sake of Christ, then I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Sudanese security raided a Christian house church in Yala City, South Darfur, and subjected the converts from Islam in the group to a day and night of beating and torture. The African Center for Justice and Peace Studies said the accused were later released after recounting their faith. The pastor was released on bail the following day, charged with apostasy, after refusing to renounce Christianity. Those found guilty of apostasy are liable for the death penalty. A source who asked not to be named said, children are conditioned to say Islamic prayers before being given food. This is not right. Let us pray. 
Lord Jesus, we pray together for the strength to go on despite our weaknesses and pain, just as you did on your walk to Calvary. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. May we follow the example of those in our world who overcome huge difficulties to follow your will. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. I, I love, love you, Jesus, Jesus my love, love above all things. I, I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. We carry the signals to the roads of the world, to the alleys of poverty and misery, marching through a dawning day to freedom and victory, to God's life. The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is spoken against and the sword will pierce through your own soul also, that thoughts out of many hearts may be revealed. Fifteen-year-old Christian girl Maria was abducted from her home in Shikapura by five Muslim men and raped. For authorities refused to investigate the crime, the child's father, Jalal Masi, filed a police report accusing a local businessman and four others. Several witnesses saw the girl abducted at one point. Mr. Massey said, We made contact the next day and the kidnapper threatened to return her dead body if we informed the police. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the gifts of your mother Mary, for entrusting her to us too as our own mother. May we be encouraged by her example of courage and endless love, and be inspired to use this in our own lives. We pray especially for all children who have been taken from their parents or who cannot be with them any longer. We also pray for all children suffering poverty, abuse, or neglect. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we also pray for all parents who are bereaved or whose children are suffering beyond their control. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. I love, I love you, Jesus, Jesus. My, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. We carry the signals to the roads of the world, to the alleys of The fifth station, Simon of Siren helps Jesus to carry the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. 
As they led him away, they seized one Simon of Siren, who was coming in from the country, and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. Following the end of the civil war in 2009, attacks have risen, largely carried out by Sinhalese Buddhist nationalists. Discrimination against Christians included assaults on churches, denial of burial in public cemeteries, and refusals to enroll Christian children in school. On Palm Sunday 2019, a nationalist mob surrounded the Methodist Church in Anuradhapura and made murderous threats to Bishop Asiri Pereira and his congregation, pelting the building with stones and firecrackers. But by far, the worst attack occurred a week later when Islamist extremists targeted Christian churches with bomb attacks on Easter Sunday. More than 300 people died and more than 500 were injured. Let us pray. We need people like Simon of Cyrene more than ever in our world today. Lord Jesus, we pray for holy men and women to answer your call to serve those around the world who hunger and thirst for you. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who carry the burdens of poverty and suffering. Lord Jesus, we pray that you open our hearts to be kind and generous to those who hunger and thirst. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. I love, I love you, Jesus, Jesus my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. We carry the signals to the roads of the world, to the alleys of poverty and misery, marching through a dawning day to freedom and victory, to God's life. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne, because him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats and he will place the sheep at his right hand but the goats at the left then the king will say to those at the right hand come O blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world for i was hungry and you gave me food I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did see the, the hungry and feed thee, or thirsty and give the, thee drink? And when did we see thee a stranger and welcome thee, or naked and clothe thee? And when did we see the sick or in prison and visit thee? And the king will answer them, Truly, I say to you, as you did it 
to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. An elderly Christian woman was bitten in Vepper village, Tamil Nadu, on the festival of Ganesh Chaturthi. Four worshippers from a group carrying a statue of Ganesha stopped her, saying that by walking on the road, she had made it impure and defiled the festival. They hurled stones at Christians who tried to rescue her. One resident said, They tell us we belong to Hindu extremist group and you are Christians. We cannot both walk on the same road. Further attacks include the killing of converts and sexual violence, such as the gang rape of five women working for a Christian NGO in Jharkhand. More than 100 churches were also closed because of extremist attacks or intervention by authorities. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, may our eyes be opened to those around us who need help. May our hearts be open to strengthen and support one another on our journeys. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. May we never fail to show solidarity with our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. I love, I love you, Jesus, Jesus my, my love above all things. I, I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. We carry the signals to the roads of the world to the alleys of poverty and misery marching through a dawning day to freedom and victory to God's life and endless glory. The seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. For I pray, only let them not rejoice over me, who boast against me when my foot slips, for I am ready to fall, and my pain is ever with me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. Father Joseph Gore and Father Felix Teolaha were among 19 Catholics who died after gunmen opened fire at a 5.30 a.m. Mass in St. Ignatius Church. Around 30 terrorists entered the church in Malom, in Nigeria's Middle Belt. Nine-year-old altar server or Yemen Akuli said, As soon as the priest started the Mass, he sighted some people with guns running towards the church and alerted people, but almost at the same time, they began to shoot. We ran and hid in one building. Following the church attack, assailants shot at local residents. More than 50 homes were torched as people retreated and food barns were set ablaze. Authorities believed Islamist Fulani herdsmen were responsible. Father Gore, one of the priests killed, had been warning about the ongoing threat posed by Fulani extremists. Let us pray. We pray for the Christian people in Nigeria, together with the members of the clergy and the religious. Lord Jesus, please strengthen them despite having to face huge difficulties and grant them the courage 
to face each day as a follower of yours. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who make huge sacrifices to follow their faith. May they be met with kindness in many areas of their lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. I, I love you, Jesus. Jesus. My love above all things, I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. We carry our signals to the roads of the world, to the station, Jesus consoles the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. And there followed him a great multitude of the people and of women who bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus turning to them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me but weep for yourselves and for your children. It was only in 2018 when Rita Habib, a Christian woman from Karakosh, reunited with her father after being held captive for four years. Habib was one of the many women kidnapped by the Daesh and forced into slavery in 2014. She was transferred to Karakosh, the last Christian majority town in Iraq, before falling to the Islamists, to Mosul, before being moved to Saria some month later. She described the misery she faced. I was bought and sold four times. They did evil things to us. They beat us and raped us. The worst of all was girls aged nine who were raped. Only seven of the women abducted from Karakosh have returned. The estimated numbers of those seized when the town fell range from 45 to 100. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for your selfless love, for loving each of us, even while you were in great distress. Teach us to look upon others with compassion and love, even when we are hurting or in pain ourselves. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for women across the world that they may know how loved they are by you, O Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. I love, I love you, Jesus, Jesus my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. We carry our signals to the roads of the world, to the Night station, Jesus falls for the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The steps of a man 
are from the Lord, and established in Him whose way He delights. Though He fall, He shall not be cast headlong, for the Lord is the stay of His hand. Falling for the third time, how does Jesus manage to get His feet a third time? Although Jesus has physically fallen, his Father is supporting him by the hand. He has not abandoned him. Police closed down the only church in Manshiet Zafaranov village, Minya, leaving 1,000 Christians without a place of worship. Muslim residents surrounded the building and demanded that it be shot. Using what the Archdiocese of Minya described as offensive and inflammatory language. On another attack, seven people were killed and 19 were wounded when Muslim extremists ambushed three buses carrying Christian pilgrims going to a remote monastery south of Cairo. According to the Coptic Orthodox Church, all but one of those killed were members of the same family. Among the dead were a boy aged 15 and a 12-year-old girl. Daesh claimed responsibility for the attack. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we pray for those making journeys. We pray that you keep them safe as they travel and that you keep the paths smooth for new lives ahead. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord Jesus, we entrust all children to you, especially those who do not have a family to care for them. We pray for all those who care for children and ensure that they have a future ahead of them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. I love, I love you, Jesus. Jesus. My love above all things, I, I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always and do with me what you will. We carry the signals to the roads of the world to the The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and made four parts, one for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was without seam woven from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture. They parted my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. In China, for Christians and other minorities, there is a marked deterioration in human rights. The U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom concluded, As a Christian, your Bible may have been rewritten by the Chinese government, your church shuttered or demolished, and your pastor imprisoned. The new regulations on religious affairs brought into force in 2018, in effect, outlawed unauthorized religious teachings and insisted religious groups report all activity online. Efforts to synthesize religious belief 
continue the pace with expressions of faith not mandated by the state strongly repressed. Even though the Vatican signed a provisional agreement with China allowing the regime a say in episcopal appointments, repression of the Catholic Church increased in the recent years. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we pray for the courage and trust to accept your will in our, in our lives. We pray that we may give up our own desires and explore what it is that you want from our hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we pray for those who persecute people of faith. We pray that their hearts may be transformed by your love which shines through each of us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. I, I love, love you, Jesus, Jesus my love, love above all things. things. I, I repent with, with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. We carry our signals to the roads of the world, to the alleys of poverty and misery, marching through a dawning day to freedom and victory, to God's life. The 11th station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The two others also, who were criminals, were led away to, to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place which is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right and one on the left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. North Korea is widely considered the most dangerous place to be a Christian, with reportedly the world's worst record regarding religious freedom. Citizens must show devotion to the ruling Kim family and the regime. Suspected disloyalty, including profession of Christianity, which is seen as Western, is severely punished. Defectors have described how, if caught, Christians face torture. Many are sent to Kualiso camps for political prisoners. Between 50 to 70,000 Christians could be present in these camps, comprising up to half of those held there. One estimate suggests that 75% of Christians die from the camp's harsh treatment. There, they have suffered extrajudicial killings, forced labor, torture, persecution, starvation, rape, forced abortion, and sexual violence. Believers have been hung on a cross over fire, crushed under a steamroller, hurled off bridges, trampled underfoot. After Kim Jong-un took power as supreme leader, up to 80 Christians were reportedly executed in a stadium some of them for owning Bibles. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, teach us to forgive each other graciously. Open our hearts to look past the pain that other people have caused us and mend our wounds. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for peace and understanding among all people of faith. We pray that minds that are closed off 
may be open to different beliefs. We pray for unity in the Christian family. Send us your Holy Spirit to make us one in love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. I love, love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. loss of loved ones at this time. The Twelfth Station, Jesus Dies on the Cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fill the scripture, I thirst. A bowl full of vinegar stood there, so they put a sponge full of the vinegar on Hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. You are Christians, and your God shall take care of your family. Authorities told all the Christian families, the government is not responsible for your families. Although Vietnam has already lifted its nationwide lockdown, the government and several charitable organizations still provide support countrywide, especially to those who are poor, have meager incomes, or have lost their jobs during the lockdown. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic and related lockdowns, their work has stopped. They strive to put food on their tables, and they consume their rice little by little every day, he says. When they learned that the government support was coming to their district, they were so happy, only to find out that they were not on the list because they are Christians. Let us pray. We pray for all those who lay down their lives to bring the good news to faithful people all around the world. We pray in thanksgiving for their sacrifice. And Lord Jesus, we ask that you give them the strength and courage to carry on living their lives for you and your people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those who have been killed for their religious beliefs. We pray for an outpouring of peace in our troubled world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. I, I love, love you, Jesus, Jesus my, my love above all things. I, I repent with, with my whole heart for having offended you. you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. We carry the signals to the roads of the world, to the eyes of poverty and misery, marching to The thirteenth station, Jesus is taken down from the cross. 
We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. After this, Joseph and Amarathia, who was the disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. So he came and took away his body. In August of 2020, the Managua Cathedral was stormed by a man with a petrol bomb, which exploded and torched its 400-year-old crucifix. This was done for the explicit reason of hatred for the church. Vandalism and attacks against Catholic churches in Nicaragua have also seen an uptick recently. Consecrated hosts have been desecrated. Monstrances, offering boxes, and statues have been destroyed. Stereo equipment and other church property have also been stolen. The situation represents a growing climate of violence and intimidation against Catholics. Let us pray. We pray for all people who are mourning the We pray also for the souls of those who have died recently, that they may rejoice in your kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those who cannot defend themselves against the threat of violence, the unborn, children, vulnerable adults, and our elderly. Lord, may you watch over them in a particularly special way. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. I, I love, love you, Jesus, Jesus my, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. We carry the signals to the roads of the world, to the alleys of poverty and misery, marching to The fourth station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and departed. Two bombs exploded during Sunday Mass on January 27. Twenty people were killed and dozens wounded during the blast at the Cathedral of Our Lady of Mount Carmel in Holo, Southern Philippines. Father Romeo Saniel, Apostolic Administrator of Holo, told aid to the church in need. No words can describe the sorrow and pain that we feel these days. Most of those who died were our regular Sunday 8 a.m. mass goers. President Rodrigo Duterte has been antagonistic to the Catholic Church throughout his time in office, calling Catholic clergy sons of bitches for criticizing his shoot-to-kill drugs policy. Various Catholic organizations have been targeted by government agencies. The Catholic Media Network radio broadcaster had its license renewal blocked in Congress. A number of priests have been shot 
by, un by unknown assailants. Such attacks may have been provoked by opposition to their activism and upholding the church social teaching. Let us pray. As we enter the celebration of 500 years of Christianity in our country, Lord, we pray for the protection of all priests, religious brothers and sisters, and lay missionaries who strive to bring your love to all corners of the earth. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Gifted to give, we pray for all those who make sacrifices to bring the sacraments to God's faithful people and for all those Christians across the world that are unable to receive the sacraments. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. I, I love, love you, Jesus, Jesus my, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. Risen Jesus, we praise you. You have triumphed over sin and death, and your victory is evident in your church today. No evil can withstand the power of your love. Let us pray. In firm faith, we ask you to hasten the day when your church is resurrected in those parts of the world where she is now sorely persecuted. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. May the joy of your victory fill the hearts of all Christians as we follow you throughout our lives. So may we bear witness to the love you have poured out for mankind and point the way to the eternal life you have opened to us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. I love, I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. Prayer for Persecuted Christians Father in heaven, you make your sun shine on good and bad alike. Your Son, Jesus Christ, died for us all, and in his glorious resurrection, he still retains the five wounds of his passion. With his divine power, he now sustains all those who suffer persecution and martyrdom for the sake of their fidelity to the faith of the church. May persecuted Christians around the world remain like Mary, their mother, together at the foot of the cross of Christ, the martyr. Comfort those menaced by violence and those oppressed by uncertainty. May your Holy Spirit of love make fruitful the witness and the blood of those who die for giving. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Christian suffer, grow. 